Hello traders, Thomas here from Vega FX, and in this video, we're going to just be doing a little breakdown on the euro dollar. We are currently in a scaled in entry. Uh, by that, I mean we've taken a trade this morning. We've scaled in that with a further entry, um, increasing our overall um, rewards on that trade. Obviously, we did reduce risk, but um, we're just going to be covering the breakdown of how I got into that trade. We're also going to look at what the euro's done um, in recent weeks and where we think it's likely headed. So looking at the chart now, we have currently got a 15 minute chart up. We'll just switch that to the hourly there. We can see that we've been on this lovely bearish downtrend. Very inefficient price action. We can see that we've had one supply zone retest by here. We've got all this imbalance left to fill. When I say imbalance, what I mean is the gaps in between these candles by here. You can see that wick didn't touch that wick, that wick didn't touch that wick. So this is imbalance, that's unmitigated. This is imbalance, that's imbalance. And basically, you've got all this. It's basically like a gap in the market that we know the bank's orders cause this imbalance. We know that banks will likely want more of their orders fulfilled at those regions, as we know that those are discounted or obviously premium zones. But on a forex pair, it's uh, the euro versus the dollar, so it's actually just a discounted zone for the dollar. But we've got this consolidation. Uh, in my last video, we did go into Wyckoff schematics and why. Um, they aren't helpful because this could be a redistribution or an accumulation schematic. And I, I cover why uh, we've simplified it um, in our method. But we have entered a couple of trades in this region, guys. And um, I've actually entered into two trades by here, which we're going to cover now. So if we go into the five minute chart and we put the rewinds tool up, we can see. So this is what the chart looks like. This is what the chart looks like before the week end. You can see that we've got this by here. This is clear manipulation. And we know that price is likely to sweep through the liquidity that's been built up below this trend line. And we had a break of structure to the upside yesterday. Uh, well, not yesterday, sorry, but Friday. And it left unmitigated imbalance by here. You can see that this candle by here comes under that so we classify that as a camps trends candle we don't use this one normally it would be this one as this candle actually becomes um, below the, the last candle there that's an inside candle this becomes the camps trends candle that we use for our demand zone so this will happen before the weekend. I didn't have a risk order set. Um, I, I tend not to if it's a trade setup that's actually occurred before the weekend because we know that Mondays are low volume, guys, and you'll see that in a second. And we know that price can tend to sweep when there's low, vo uh, low volume. So if we start playing the chart there, we can see we'll actually put the volume indicator on. You can see that the volume is absolutely minuscule by here. Even after the London Open or just before the London Open, you can actually see that the um, the volume was um, minuscule there. And then we get this sweep downwards. So I know a few of my community members did actually get involved with this before that sweep. Um, and... To be fair, even if you had a risk order with your stop loss below that, you wouldn't have been tagged out of that trend, uh, out of that trade, sorry. But we've had that downward movement taking out the liquidity by here, but a complete retrace of price. We draw our last high by here. We can see a break of structures to the upside, indicating a reversal of order flow. Now, there is clear imbalance still unmitigated by here. And if we go down onto the two minute chart, that imbalance has been mitigated. So we draw our man zone by here. Again, the wick of this candle comes below the wick of that candle. So we know there's a counter trend, counter -trend candle within that. And we're going to get involved. 
So this is where I had my risk order set. Didn't even look for the manipulation. We can see that the volume picked up by here. It's still nowhere near as high as previous um, volume levels, but it's higher than this price action nonetheless. So we're, got, we're involved in this trade. We'll add spread onto that. And I didn't even have my stop loss below that um, in this case because I was very confident in this trade. And we're going to look to target unmitigated imbalance. Now, the last unmitigated imbalance on the swing high is by here, guys. Still very low volume. So personally, to me, I'm not going to trade that. I'm going to look to target this higher volume um, supply zone. And we're going to draw a counter trend supply zone by here. I'll highlight that in dark. Why am I highlighting it in dark, guys? Because there is liquidity above it, which is likely inducement for a supply zone above, which would be around this area. Obviously, it would be that's been mitigated. To be honest with you, even that is low volume. So this this is why I've been holding on to this trade. If you actually come on to my main chart that I use, you'll see that I actually don't hold on to my trades as long as I could. That trade could have gone from 8R, or sorry, 9R to about 20. Same with this trade, although you may have been tagged out break even if you didn't close out. This trade, however, is different. You've got this liquidity build up by here, which I'll outline now. So if you go into a higher time frame perspective, you can see that you've got this liquidity build up. We know if price hits this again, it's likely to sweep especially how far we are in the consolidation so this could easily be the spring guys um, as we know um, with Wyckoff there is a spring and then there's a test and then it continues upwards and like I mentioned earlier you've got all this volume that's unmitigated um, ready for the taking if we go on to a higher time frame perspective such as the weekly chart we know that we've dropped down through into weekly demand and we know that there is still so much imbalance up there ready to be fulfilled even if it targets this one supply zone by here even this one we're going to be in for a massive trade guys i think we'll just check what this is running at at the moment sorry i'll uh, just show you the scaling actually if we go into the one minute chart you can see that the order flow turns bearish. You get liquidity build up. So I hadn't, I hadn't reduced my risk at all on this trade at this point. Price comes back down into this order block. And then we get this break of structure, guys. So that is just another trade on the one minute chart where we're going to look to get involved and I was happy to scale in on this and I was going to reduce my risk straight away as soon as we had the following break of structure so we had a scale in add spread onto this we had our stop one pip below that We'll play, play price action. So I had reduced risk for there. We had our first break of structure on the one minute chart, break of structure on the five minute chart, and I then reduced risk on both trade uh, on the, the first trade as well. So this is where we're at at the moment, guys. We have had, we did get a, a little bit of reaction on the um, Asia high liquidity, and this, um, I, I did say before that this um, supply zone is very low volume so i wasn't worried about that i was under the impression that price was going to sweep through it and then we've got this inducement point by here guys and i say that's an inducement point just because we haven't hit this trend line and we know that the banks and we have actually hit it we're actually we've actually wicked slight uh, gone slightly above that and it's retraced back in until this order flow reverses i'm not even going to be looking to get out of this trade 
I am comfortable. We've, uh, like I said, had some really nice trades um, last week. So I'm in nice profit for the month. And I can see this trade going for much further. Like I said, guys, if we go onto the weekly charts there, we've got so much imbalance to fill. It's actually quite incredible. Um, and yes, I do believe... I. I always do tell um, my traders and my community that you should never have a bias, but um, I do believe that the euro with the current economic climate is set to um, go on to a further downtrend on an even higher time frame. Um, <clears throat> we do have all this imbalance, but here I know this is literally from um, the uh, from the start of the millennium, there, but... Um, it's uh and i obviously these these demand zones over time um the more historic they are the less reliable they are to be honest with you because banks can withdraw orders but you can see that even um monthly demands there did see a reaction there um and obviously by here we had a really nice um around march time when we actually got the crash during covid in 2020 you actually um you'll actually find that it um, crashed into uh, monthly demands there so we can reasonably assume that price will reach there at some point with the current economic climate whether it wants to uh, come back to this unmitigated zone first is another story but this is why i always say you should never use high time frame order flow to dictate your trade because you will miss out on opportunities um, obviously looking at this on uh, a daily chart for example your people are going to think you're stupid for trading um, a long setup when you've got this clear bearish order flow on higher time frames but as you can see the only trades that i've taken um this month so far have been longs and we've had some really high returners we have seen a bit of a, re uh, a retrace for here I, I still haven't locked in any profit on these trades. Um, call me a madman. You will. Um, we've got all this liquidity build up. We've still got unmitigated supply zones even on these time frames, guys. These aren't even um, higher time frames. So um, I am pretty confident that this is going to keep going. If it doesn't, and if we do get a breakdown, say it does drop below here and it does break through. This liquidity and stays below it i will be looking at short opportunities guys i always keep my uh, op, uh my bias open if i see that the market has changed against um my current setup i will look for another setup and i'll never sit on my hands there's too many people that will take a, lo a, a losing trade and they'll either revenge trades in the same bias or they will um they will act defeated and they won't look for any further opportunities but that is not the way you should be trading guys so just a really quick video guys just on uh, the euro where it's um been and where we think it's headed and also a little breakdown of the trades that i entered today i hope you guys are all having a lovely trading week i will catch you guys in the next video if you do have any um requests on videos you want me to upload um just send me a dm on discord or on here in the comments and i will get straight to it and um it would really be a massive help if you did like and subscribe just to boost me in that um algorithm of youtube's there but uh yeah you guys have a lovely week peace out